that case, do you all want to get into the sequeling of Real Genius? Uh, or is it Rewind first? No, no, it's the sequel. Wait, all right, the sequel. All right, cool. So as I was saying, you know, one of the subplots actually of it could be, you know, all the fallout from all the neighborhood kids and people that fucked around with the popcorn that was, you know, laser cooked. And that popcorn got super irradiated. So let's say Real Genius takes put. Real Genius 2 takes place 15 years in the future, and you've got Kent doing infomercials of... He's still alive? Have, yeah. <laughs> um, he makes it, but he's in a wheelchair and stuff, and he's like on like life support <laughs> and stuff, and he's asking, and he's like, you know... Oh. And have you, or, like, uh, have you or a loved one fun? eaten irradiated popcorn at this event in 1985? If so, you could be open for compensation. <laughs> Shit. Dude, he's got like all the kids that are there playing and like eating all the popcorn. And they're all like, just a bunch of like graveyard of like two. two <laughs> you just see the one there in the back. Kill me. So, yeah, someone recorded it. Someone recorded that play thing, playtime. And then 20 years later, they're using it. It's like they show, they fade out and then they show it the fucking cemetery. Yeah. Oh. Like, it's just. <laughs> You know, the only one that survives all that is going to be fucking Laszlo because he didn't touch the popcorn yeah. after he got lasered. Yeah. Uh, Chris Knight dies. Mitch Taylor's dead. The Asian guy, Jordan's dead. Like, they're all fucking dead. Oh, Except for dude. Kent, for some reason, he's in a wheelchair <laughs> doing telethons now. So, actually, you know, like, everybody that could flip on Hathaway dies in that event. <laughs> Hathaway gets away scot free. He's doing some other fucking project, and the the main plot of it is, you know, the students they start reading into the history of Hathaway, and they find out about this 1985 event, and then they start snooping into what their project actually is about. And <laughs> 1980, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see here. What? The, we have the senator and the dean too, like. Maybe they researched. Uh, they, they, they. I, I would say that uh, Chris Knight and Mitch Taylor informed them about what was going on with Doctor Hathaway. Let's assume that, that they told them right then and there, uh -huh. and they get so excited that with the laser going off and making the popcorn thing happen, that they're like, "We got him!" Then they go join in the celebration, so they also <laughs> die. Um, <laughs> we love popcorn. <laughs> it is a good day for popcorn, and then yeah. it shows like. This like you know congressman throwing like popcorn in the air, then it like freeze frames for a sec in the you know the Kent commercials of the future of the now future or now present, <laughs> and it's like in memory of Senator you know so and so, which helped. So we now have this act in his memory against like <laughs> radioactive you know foods and consumables. I don't know. You know the one thing I always question about that scene whenever all the kids are jumping in there i go all those kids are dirty and people are still fucking eating that popcorn like dude it's the 80s they didn't know what germs were in the 80s <laughs> like you have like all these like rancid ass kids throwing popcorn in the air and everyone's just fucking freely like having it fall Did you guys read any about so like there was a little trivia on wikipedia about that whole garbage uh supposedly it was orville <laughs> redenbacher popcorn actually that's the scandal <laughs> it took him like three months apparently to fill all that <laughs> Like they were, oh, been, wow. they were popping popcorn for three months apparently, and like they sprayed yeah, it with pale uh, ass popcorn, dude. They sprayed it with fire retardant so that it wouldn't burn. And then was the real it. laser they had for this movie or what? <laughs> <laughs> um. So if anybody ate that shit, they did. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so they basically ate asbestos as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is the 80s. It might have been the still. Yep, yep, yep. Mm, ooh. We've kind of concluded that most of our main characters are dead because of the popcorn and the, yeah, everyone, but everyone the there, but Kent Kent, for some reason, he's still kicking. He's all like skinny, like skeletal and stuff like that. Asking uh, people for money yeah, to just help waiting to die to support the families <laughs> and stuff. Has a loved one of yours passed away from this? <laughs> you know, we're still trying to find all of you out there for your due compensation. Ah, nice. He's he's doing those like class action lawsuit commercials. <laughs> <laughs> well, and all, but also by the time like yeah. we're twenty years in the future, so he's presumably in his like you know maybe upper forties because I've I've wondered about the 
the overall makeup of because I found it weird if they were all like undergraduates that were working on this crazy advanced There's project versus like if they were so like was Kent essentially a grad student and um, maybe Chris was trying to get out on like uh, just with a B with a bachelor's or whatever but since Kent was basically doing all this slave work maybe he was like the classic grad student um, um, maybe I don't and know. then you also had the like the other two dudes that were there that were. Yeah, it looked like they were like in their late twenties, early thirties. I I always thought that the the school itself didn't have the merits of like bachelors or masters or anything. They kind of just went through and they kind of, I don't know, they had like an overall degree with whatever they were studying. That mm-hmm. maybe that encompassed like maybe it's like they a were general, generalized jump. generalized degree. Well, maybe they were just jumping ahead, maybe like to like masters or something you know like they just didn't go through uh, the i mean i could believe like that with, with all their work they kind of could uh accumulate all these uh uh degrees like kind of in one shot hmm. you know I, mean? I don't know yeah i don't know so i was like how like, how was the school structured um yeah. so but let's assume that kent was maybe a grad student so we'll say he's probably he about looked, he looked like a grad student yeah so we'll say he's in his mid-20s flash for 20 years for part two um <clears throat> And with all of the radiation and stuff and the chemo they had to like, you know, <laughs> would keep him alive. He's basically like a advanced Wilford Brimley, you know, <laughs> talking about diabetes, but he's talking about popcorn itis or whatever. <laughs> but not as not as uh, plump as uh, William Brimley. Oh, no, no. It's totally dope. emaciated, barely hanging on, you know, feeding tubes like <laughs> Maybe with the with the hawking, you know, keypad to communicate. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Still embraces. Yeah, he fucks hard. He still has braces on. <laughs> right. Because the radiation fused him to his. Like, she had to get him like all ripped out or whatever. <laughs> Uh, that's, um, so I don't know. What do you guys think about a part two? That's, that's like, that's so say everyone lives. What are we talking here? I was thinking that maybe if Zay, the popcorn had no bearing on their health, whatever, there was no cancerous uh, that pretty much wiped out our entire cast. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking that maybe um, real genius is them trying to run away from like the government. That's they know too much about what's going on. So the government's kind of coming in to pretty much take them out. And they're basically, basically, Using their genius to outmaneuver the CIA and coming after them. What is this, hackers all of a sudden? (laughs) It could turn into hackers. They (laughs) they got the computer skills and the laser skills to make their own stuff. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe they're they're actually have laser guns in this. Wouldn't that be cool? The right movie occurred to me. um, Because for the longest time, I'd always conflate this with Masterminds for some reason. Isn't that the one with the. uh, With Patrick uh, Stewart as the bad guy? mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but no, it's I, like I seen what was the premise for that one again? Wasn't there like a it's like a young hackery kid and a school gets taken over for some reason by like an AI or some shit? What was it? I, I can't remember what the fuck it was, but it was some sort of like I think Stewart's organization was like a terrorist group of some sort, and yeah, it was kind of. But I was, but I always think about like you know how they have like you know kids that are so well, you know really intelligent that are saving the day or whatever. So I just conflate these. And I was like, dude, was there any weird science shit in masterminds? Cause that'd be fucking, that might be one for the list, but anyway, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say that, um, they kind of, they go about their lives like Chris Knight and uh, Mitch Taylor, uh, thinking that everything's okay. But the, since the CIA knows that they know too much about their initial plans to like kill off, uh, like uh, other countries, uh, dictators or whatever the fuck they are, um, they go after Laszlo first and they kill him and his wife. And that's why they got to come back together to outsmart the CIA because they're coming after them in some way, you know. But, they, dude, but, but Laszlo, but the thing is, that. here's here's the twist, though. Laszlo knows that they're like highly expendable and probably targets for what they know. So... He has a way to like fake their deaths and then they return and he's got like a haircut and you know, she's dyed her hair and they're coming for you. CIA and turns Great. into now like, we're, we're uh, totally not on the list now for saying a pineapple, that. a pineapple express kind of adventure. <laughs> with, <laughs> with 
with lasers. With lasers, yeah. Yeah, they bring back the lasers, you know. Right, it's important. Because well, the government I'm, I'm doesn't want to like, like abandon the project, you know, no, they want to make not. it better. Because yeah. now they're going to take out take out walls, take out you know whole structures. Unless, unless they they kidnap Mitch Taylor, gotta get so that he can continue plane. with the project and like just well, like what happened to Gary and, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they hate. kidnap they kidnap Mitch Taylor and it's up to Chris and Laszlo to go and uh, save uh, Mitch because they they're either gonna after they he completes the project and gives them all the information that they need. They're gonna kill him, so they're trying to save him from being murdered. <gasps> and then you can tie it into the to the weird science movie universe There's where fucking, Mitch is working with Gary and Wyatt down in our version of the sequel, so we can make these sequels. <laughs> they know, they're coming together. <sighs> God damn. <laughs> you fucking have a Kiefer Sutherland's character from Flat Nerders <laughs> comes out of nowhere <laughs> i got you guys and then he just kills himself he goes i got a way to fake our death but not really you know right <laughs> he does it he yeah. to and it doesn't work and he just dies and, they, and that's the end of that scene so they, they all die in a hospital somehow but he goes and like revives all of them at some point like he, <laughs> he brings the whole team back julia roberts fucking william baldwin Oliver Platt, they all come back to fucking re revitalize everybody. But then like everyone plus Mitch plus Gary and Wyatt now have to do like deal with their own situation of flat oh, layers fuck, because like, yeah. then they have all to nations <laughs> come back to kill them. So like so all so, while trying to take down the CIA at the yeah. god damn it. <laughs> Your subconscious is attacking them while they're trying to like run around. Run like, I think we've got a you know a fucking series, you know, <laughs> together. Series. Wasn't there a TV series? series? Yeah, I never saw it. Well, I mean, there was a TV series of uh weird science. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there was supposed to be a TV series of real genius, also. Yeah. Oh no shit. Uh, it wasn't. That did not I, uh, I read that, but I didn't see if but it was in it was in 2014. Said a report oh, service uh, uh, September no. 2014 that a potential television series was in the works. NBC uh, was set to produce the comedy series with Sony TV, Happy Madison, and Three Eyes. So like Adam Sandler's company was huh. involved. was involved. Damn. Well, man. but as of as of December 2017, there are no updates on the production. Pretty much probably got abandoned or something. No, yeah, that fell um, in the fucking development hell. It's because they didn't have all the great ideas that we're working with right now. Yeah, I know. Um, you gotta look, look into the camera and be like NBC, Sony, Madison, Adam Sandler. We I will write for you guys. We will we'll hire us, guys. Hire us. Yeah, we, I we mean, we're come as a team on we paper. Them, you know, we'll write <laughs> yeah. we just all show up in tuxedos for the job interview and <laughs> come on, hello. single resume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for my it paycheck. Just says, it just has MoQuest Studios on it. <laughs> <laughs> we can we, we walk up to him like uh like in a scene where, where uh, Chris Knight walks up to the the military people when they're in Hathaway's uh house as they're leaving. He's like, so "What do we got here, gentlemen?" <laughs> we just walk up to like a group of people. <laughs> yeah. And we're on a first name basis with all these people and like, exactly. "Hello, madam." Like, uh, yeah. Steve, How's it going, uh, Steve around here. Steve, you see me? Yeah, we're on the studio. <laughs> no. All right, that's Stevie, cool. where the hell is Stevie? I haven't seen Stevie in ages. <laughs> they go like, we're gonna first time meeting him. Like, <laughs> like, is he gonna come hang out? With us? Like, bounce some ideas off him and stuff. You know, <laughs> some more chopping, Whatever. more chopping stuff. Yeah. Okay, so um, anything else uh, regarding a sequel possibility? Because I mean, I think these are some fantastic ideas. Some have, I like my Kent one man show idea. Yeah, these cross, <laughs> these crossovers. I and think really well. I, I like cool. I, I like Ray's plot, but I really want to figure out a way to fold Kent into there <laughs> with like a cameo or something, just unrelated. Well, like my, mind you, phone. I did say assuming that like, our main characters survive, all the kids could die. Like and they're watching Kent still on, doing on, his, on, uh, on TV doing his you know? his. Uh... Oh, Kent loses his mind and yeah. becomes like a Buddhist and like <laughs> goes away to like China or Tibet or something like that. And then comes back at some point, you know, bald head, you know, fucking just. He's still making mirrors. <gasps> he knows Kung Fu now. So then he's able to go fight the CIA. <laughs> still embraces. <laughs> you know, and his glasses. The, I just, I just pictured it. Look, so they, they see Kent originally like making his class action lawsuit fucking commercials and shit 
you know, and then it, it pans out and that's when you see fucking Chris and everyone on the run. And then later on, yeah, that's when fucking Kent like off screen goes and has his Buddhist rebirth and shit and comes back and fucking like takes a bullet from her or something or like he just blocks him and saves their ass at some point, like when they're on the run. Oh, is he the one whatever. all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he just like turns, he's like, I got this guys, and they just fucking leave and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> and then he dies because they shoot him or some shit. But, oh man, he just like walks around it. the corner and all you hear is bah, 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 and you see like bullets and okay. So <laughs> I'd like to propose a new end of the arc episode format. So we take all of our weird science movies and then we try to make a sequel that involves all of them. That's we should try that. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a shit ton of yeah, that's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, we gotta figure out what and cut the chaff, you know. But I can see it. See, it's coming together. (laughs) Well, 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 you know, we'll we'll start doing that from now on. Like, if we have like a certain series that we're talking about, like all the movies gotta do a crossover sequel, you know. Dude, I mean, we we literally gotta flesh out the movie on one episode. Shit. Ah. That's just that's just getting our brains working, you know. They're all firing on all cylinders. Just a little bit of yeah. Uh, figure out who hangs dong is going to be fucking really <laughs> cool, fucking hard. Really? Ah-ha-ha. Obviously, it's going to be Kilmer. Let's yeah. be realistic here. Exactly. It's the only. It's the only one that should. Uh, I mean. Oh my god, that's oh, yeah. so dark. You go the radiation angle. And you bring Kilmer back, and it's destroyed his voice. So he developed his own technology <laughs> to regain his voice. <laughs> God damn! Only it's like yeah, he picks instead of like uh, Hawking's robot voice, he picks like <laughs> he picks like Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice or some shit. No, haven't haven't you heard that shit that they developed for him? Oh, like yeah. Kilmer lost his voice to the fucking throat cancer and shit, yeah. and a uh, fucking bunch of nerds, you know, figure right. out a way for him to like use, you know, like clips from all of his spoken word throughout his like acting career and shit, and they were able to like parse it all together. Yeah, because his, his, uh, his, his, so we have work for Val Kilmer now. His vocal cords are super, I am. yeah, I'd forgotten it's, about that actually. That was why he disappeared for a number, a number of years from. And we got his comeback, and it's a fucking movie that's gonna have a bunch of tie-ins. And oh, fuck, we got I mean, like, movie. I was I was jazzed to see him in the fucking Tenacious D music video, man. <laughs> For Rise of the Phoenix, uh, I think the la- their last album, like Val Kilmer, comes out in the as uh, Jack Black's buddy in uh, one of the uh, music videos. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. He plays himself. It's fucking hilarious. 